You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 5th, 2022. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we believe Alex Jones getting roasted in open court like a pig on a spit should be nominated for an Emmy. Hat tip, Hal Sparks. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hey, Drift Glass. Hey, Blue Gal. We had a lot of options this week for titles for our show. Yeah, too many, really. Really. The the mm-hmm. first one is Hat Tip Midas Touch. Yes, we Kansas. Uh-huh. I like that one. Then there's Fake Lake, which has really caught on as the name for Carrie Lake, whose answer to everything is you're from MSDNC and trying to destroy America if right. you accuse her of anything. Also, and we are. We all are. So that's fair. The election is completely rigged until the insta second that I win. And then finally, I love this one. Info was. Yeah. We we highly recommend you go and watch Hal Sparks's YouTube from yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> because, oh, Lord, uh, you know, we all got little like glimpses, like passing subway train glimpses of what Alex Jones was going through. Mm-hmm. Stuff. But it was um, it was amazing. It was amazing. I have. It was I a day in court, wasn't it? I ha- I've never ever heard of anything like this at all ever happening in court. Um, well, and the author, one of the <clears throat> writers for Law and Order, was on Twitter today saying, "You think that this is dramatic? The way we put together drama on Law and Order, right. we would never make an attorney this stupid. No, no, that's, no one would it, believe it. It's not believable." <laughs> Uh, well, I know, and I, I know I've told you the story before, but it reminded me up until you know it all went sideways, um, and and the judge said, "Let's keep going." Mm-hmm. Um, in high school, you know, I was a high school debater, and mm-hmm. my partner and I was probably junior year, and we got paired up, we got matched up with with a couple of young men who had clearly just been thrown into the mix in the last minute. They had no idea what to do. They had their little sample cases and suitcase and, and suits. But they had no idea how to present evidence. They had no idea how to argue. They had they had no clue what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And it was just it was just um, brutal. Mm-hmm. Just doing what we normally do was just cruel to them. And the judge stopped it. Yeah. And the judge, in, which I'd never heard of before, never heard of since, the judge said, "Okay, here's the thing. These guys won. <laughs> Let's just mm-hmm. get that out of the way. They're they're going to win. They won. It's over. Let's use the remaining hour to talk about how to do debate." It's, that's clearly, a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I've, I've been in moot court situations where the judge in the case has said, all right, we need to stop pretending we're attorneys in courtroom right now. Right. Because both of you, both arguing student attorneys, uh-huh. do not know actually what the hearsay rule says you can do and what you can <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of important. And it's a little complicated. There are uh-huh. some finesses to it yeah. where you can... There are exceptions. There are ways you can finesse in court to get it to the way you want it to be. You can object on the basis of hearsay, but there are other ways to get around that. And so we're going to spend, like you said, half an hour talking about this. Of course, this is a real court. This isn't a high school debate. That's the thing. Or, uh, you know, the thing that has struck me about Alex Jones and two, two things. One is, in spite of all the schadenfreude of... Yes, watching Alex Jones get roasted by his own attorneys, the judge having to explain to him again, over and over again, and saying it's absurd from the bench. This is absurd that I have to tell you for the third time what perjury is. Right. Um, but and that's all, you know, hysterical to watch and to watch his attorneys screw up. And the other attorneys had his phone for 12 days and pounced it on him in court when he was there. Well, and you know, back that up because some people might not know what happened, which is oh yeah, yeah. His Alex Jones, uh, who's used to blustering and bullying and yelling, he doesn't know how to not do that. Mm -hmm. And in court, it just absolutely hamstrings him every time he opens his mouth. Right. Every time he 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 thinks he's on a radio show and the judge is not having any of it. But his he gave his 
unredacted cell phone with years worth of text, like three years worth of text on two, it. Two, 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 two years, yeah. two years worth of text to his attorney. Mm-hmm. And his attorney just handed it over uh, a digital copy of it over to the prosecutor. Didn't, didn't look at it, didn't vet it, didn't check it, just handed it over. And there is a rule that says if you hand over evidence during the process of sort of discovery, yeah, discovery, enlarged discovery, yep. um, and you let it go for 10 days. Uh, in that period, you can say, oops, oopsie, shouldn't have given you that. We'll have to take that back. But this attorney didn't do that. Mm-hmm. This attorney didn't bother to check. And so suddenly, just before today, really, just before this trial, this trove of documents mm-hmm. lands in the prosecutor's lap right. from heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this is like Martha Mitchell, you know, plane crash, satchel full of money. Like, where the hell did right. that come from? <laughs> Completely out of yeah. a, out of the clear blue sky. The greatest gift you can ever give to a prosecutor lands perf- at, with perfect timing. Right. And the silence from the entire conservative media universe. Oh, yeah. He's been because, abandoned because they've all been on his show. Well, and they're probably yeah. all on his phone. Right. And, and they're probably all on his phone. And there, it doesn't take much more than him talking to Roger Stone and then Roger Stone talking to Trump and then Trump talking to Alex Jones or whatever, whatever, to say, oh, this is now a conspiracy. Yeah. Well, and, and it... it and January 6th committee wants the phone and they're yes, going to they get do. it. Yes, they the do. The DOJ wants the phone. They're going to get mm-hmm. it. Law enforcement wants the phone. They're going to get it. Yeah. Now, again, the two things that I come away with from this, this eventful day. Yes, indeed. One is it still breaks my heart to hear the word Sandy Hook. It does. Mm-hmm. And that has nothing to do with Alex Jones, except that he inflicted further pain on those families in a cruel way for money and for a lot of money. And we found out yesterday just that there was $800,000 in one day he made from selling prepper kits and supplements. It's huge, huge money. So Sandy Hook breaks my heart just hearing those words in spite of the schadenfreude that you get from watching Alex Jones get self-mutilated. The second thing, though, and this relates to that phone situation, is it is clear to me that Alex Jones and his attorneys don't give a shit whether he's found quote unquote guilty or not. It's about the money. It's about right. making sure that Alex Jones doesn't have to sacrifice a significant portion of his wealth to these families. Yeah, exactly. He behaved over and over again in court yesterday as if it does not matter to him in any way what the jury thinks of him, what the judge thinks of him, and what the audience outside of his fans think of him. He kept bitching about that, well, the New York Times does this, well, the liberal media does this. And he's going to step out and play exactly the same way that Steve Bannon does. I'm just going to turn right around and blame everybody else, and my audience is going to soak it up with a biscuit. Yeah, and, and pay me for it. And pay me for it. Mm -hmm. So that's why he's bitching about the judge and bitching about the jury on his show right now while the... During the trial. No one in their right mind would do that, except that Alex Jones knows his audience. And he knows that he has to keep up this facade of, it's the world against you and me, guys. Get your prepper kits. Got to get those kits, man. And we got to get under... We're going to go underground. And we've been deplatformed. He mentioned that multiple times. And he doesn't give a shit. No. All he he cares about is hiding his money because that's points. And that's where he... I mean, he was saying shit in court. Did you... Did did you... Is this up on your website of the picture of the judge on fire? (laughs) Oh, I don't know. I I don't know. I can't... Who knows? And they show him a picture. Did you say this on thus and so day? I I never said... Well, let's run the tape. And Mm -hmm. it's like perjury after perjury after perjury. Mm -hmm. And it's all on tape and it's all in text and the prosecutor has it all. And he's just lying his ass off and doesn't Mm -hmm. care. The only time he really shit himself was when he found out that they had his phone. And when they found out they had his financial records. Right. Exactly. They had, that's when he lost his shit. Right. They, they found out you're making a lot more money than you're, you told us about in this in, in, uh, in pre-trial is, I mean, there's a $800,000 in a day. How much money you have. Yeah. Right. And that's what scares him. This is, this is uh, honestly that my mind jumped to the last episode of Better Call Saul, 
You know <laughs> what? No, no. What? What about my money in the Caymans? No, they got that. What about what about laser tag? They got that too. Well, what about uh, the nail salons? It's all gone. It's all gone. They have all your shit, man. They know where all the money is or they're going to, and they're going to take it all away from you. Right. And and right. if you're lucky, you won't go to prison. But I don't That's think you're going to get that thing. lucky. He doesn't realize that lying in court will get him in prison. No. And he, he is. He thinks he's immune from that. Um, he is. He is Donald Trump with no filter at all. Right. And right. Donald Trump is the Republican Party with the tiniest fig leaf. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, then that's why the, the entire conservative media is ignoring it and lying about it and talking about Hunter Biden's laptop because they're scared shitless that th- there's shit on that phone that will make them unemployable, will destroy right. their careers. Right. And their money. Again, and their it's, money. All, and their it's money. all about the Benjamins. Um, so I want a Judge Gamble standard. <laughs> judge Gamble is the judge in this case, and she's really trying. I think she's just had it with him now. Yeah. Um, but she's really trying to instruct him in a way that will keep him out of jail and allow this case to go forward, because that's her job, is to make the case go forward. And here's what she said. This is quoted in The Atlantic. And I want a ju- what I want is a Judge Gamble standard for anyone in the universe speaking on camera. I know yes. I will not get that, but that's what I want. I want everyone in the universe who is on camera, who is on a podcast, who is speaking about politics in America, I want them to hold be, be held to this standard. Quote, you must tell the truth while you testify. This is not your show. You need to slow down and not take what you see as opportunities to further the message you're wanting to further, and instead only answer the specific and exact questions you have been asked. You believe everything you say is true, but it isn't. Your beliefs do not make something true. That is what we're doing here. Just because you claim to think something is true does not make it true. It does not protect you. It is not allowed. You're under oath. That means things need to be true when you say them. And then she said, don't talk. (laughs) Yeah, that was my favorite part. (laughs) Don't talk. Just don't talk. Just shut up. And And he doesn't know how to do that. No. Uh, We need to move on. But yeah, go watch. Hal Sparks has extensive footage of this with commentary Mm -hmm. and a fart gun, which which makes it interesting. Uh, We love Hal. He has extensive files, so go watch. Go watch <laughs> go House Parks from House yesterday. Parks and YouTube. then come back here and tell us how, how awesome we are for sending you over to <laughs> Going House over Sparks to House Sparks. Mm-hmm. Drift class. Yeah. Did you know your wife wrote postcards to voters in Kansas <clears throat> about you, the constitutional amendment? I did. You, you were in Kansas writing postcards no, to voters? I was in, oh, I was in Springfield, Illinois, writing oh. postcards to Kansas and letting them know that a vote no is a vote for choice for women. I knew you were writing something, but I don't interfere with your, you know, writing. With my I know postcards. better than that. No, it you just... know. You, you take them to the mailbox and that's I it. Do. I do. take them to the mailbox. Here, they're right. stamped. Take them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been doing 15 postcards to voters a week uh, so that I would have, my daughter wanted me to have some bucket goals for the summer. And I said, how about 100 postcards to voters? She thought that was a good idea. Yeah. She's also the one that t- tells me to stay off of social media. Stay off, mom. And she's <laughs> right. She's, She's right. right. Well, you, you know, taper, taper off. There's, there's a lot of, um, there's stuff, stuff that I need to do there for work, but right. doom scrolling. I don't need to do. And she's no. right. I don't need to do that. Uh, but Kansas, wow. We won and won big. I mean, this was, yeah. this was 20% of Republican voters voted no to change the constitution to allow the state legislature to ban abortion. Mm-hmm. Massive, massive, voter registration of women during the time between the demise of Roe v. Wade and and this middle of the summer, early August primary election day for Republicans only. Republican only. It's just... They really wanted to to manipulate this in every way possible. And we won. They lost. They lost. They lost. Big. And they they lost publicly. Right. Yeah. And it feels good to win. I mean, that's the thing. It feels good to win. And I hope that it inspires women around the country. I, I, I 
tell you, people do not understand in the media how the world has changed no. since 2016 no. for women. They do not. They keep getting and surprised. They keep, just... well, they keep diminishing our anger. Yeah. And, you know, you've mentioned many times that David Brooks said, oh, you know, these silly pink hats. Silly women in the pink women hats, spent, you know. Women spent the time between the election and the inauguration in mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, uh -huh. and to, to calm themselves, knit pink hats in the yep. hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and wore them on it, the day after Inauguration Day in the largest protest in the history of the world in terms uh -huh. of participation of people and countries involved. There, but were, it was a there was a women's march in Antarctica. But it was a frivolous waste of time. Yeah, blah, and blah, your blah. energy would be spent it better be spent elsewhere and it won't last because you know you know how these things you know how ladies are. You know how ladies they're flighty. You know how this And shit then happens. Donald Trump decided to have a beer party on the day that the House voted to take away our health insurance. Yeah, that was the one two punch. You reminded me that that you yeah. you know, it's not a woman's issue necessarily, but it really is a woman's issue. And it's about well, you and your family. And they're taking away your children's health care. And they're and doing your it. your health care. Exactly. And they're doing it while they laugh and drink beer and say, fuck you. There's nothing you can do about this. Right. Right. And Donald Trump bragging about, I'm the president. Look at me. Yep. And Rodney Davis. Don't and forget. And Rodney Davis and Liz Cheney were both out there, there. Out there whipping votes and, yeah. and toasting the president. And this is a great thing that we're getting rid of health care for poor people. Isn't that a wonderful thing that Obamacare is going to be sunk by tomorrow? And they were thrilled by this. It, what what what's her name was in tears mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, of joy when she thought it was going to go down. She was like weeping with delight that yeah. that, that, that we're going to stick it to the the uh, the, the Kenya usurper yeah. and we're going to take her, their shit away because fuck these guys. And that was the reaction when Roe versus Wade was, was oh, gutted. Yeah. It was like. Oh, good. We get to take more shit away from those awful people. I love liberal tears. And they're just like not getting the clue that the people you're hurting are the people you're married to, your children, your mother, and the women all around you. And they hate you for it. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have they're going to have their say. And every time they do this shit, there's this huge backlash, and all the pundits are shocked. They're all stunned. The oh my god. That a certain contingent of women who have spare time to write postcards to voters <laughs> yeah. and make phone calls and knock on doors and talk to each other and tell each other their stories. You and I went Monday night? No, Tuesday night. Tuesday night, yep. Tuesday night to a Moms Demand Action meeting Yes. here in Springfield. Yes, we did. And I was surprised and not surprised that there were a ton of people there. Yep. Um, membership in Moms Demand Action has exploded since Uvalde. Uh, I think because we thought that nothing could get worse after Sandy Hook, and then we continued to have shootings, but Uvalde showed that it can be children again and again and again. Yes, and the entire, the entire state and local police force will stand by and let it happen. Right. And so it's time to get involved. Just And so membership has been exploding in that group. And... Uh, Springfield is no exception. Um, what I didn't expect at that meeting was a uh, meet and greet from our Democratic congressional candidate, Nikki Budzinski. I know. Shocking. And that I, we we just came to find out what we could do to help and how we could participate. And I know they're going to do a postcard party and they want to get uh, candidates who and they don't say Democrat. They say, we want candidates who support our issue to be elected. Right. And it, it turns just, out those are all Democrats. That's it just, just so a happens. coincidence. <laughs> yeah, they're all Democrats. That's right. That's a coincidence. And, sh and the woman leading the meeting said, if we find a Republican that's in favor of gun sanity, we will support that candidate. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't happened. So uh, Nikki Budzinski, not to dwell on it too much, but uh, she's a good candidate. Yeah. She's doing postcards to voters from yes. her own campaign. Uh, it is interesting the um, group of voters that she wants to focus on. Yes. Is women over 50. 
Yeah, I felt I didn't feel seen at all, honey. I felt like <laughs> you needed to stand up and show them six foot eight of what's man. The, what's the patriarchy even for? If I'm going to be excluded from you had, on the way there, you had all kinds of speeches. I did saved up for mom's demand action. Ladies, please, ladies, please. <laughs> but I came. Yeah, I was you're treated not going like, to do that. No, <laughs> the men there were definitely uh, guests. Yes. So, and that's fine. I mean, you guys are welcome to participate. Sure. Uh, and, but Nikki Budzinski, I believe, is a competent candidate, and I think she'll be a competent uh, deliverer of uh, constituent services. Yeah. And uh, I think she'll also be a competent, you know, backbencher for the first few years. I don't know what she's going to do in terms of committees, and I don't think she knows either. But she is on track because of gerrymandering to win this race she is yep and this is a and national she, race national race oh yeah and and she's been endorsed that was the the big celebration was that day she had received the endorsement of the national mom's demand action group yeah and um, her race has been written about i think in politico or politico Axios and as like... as the blue flippable state one of the top blue flippable districts right yeah yeah um so that's all good and she doesn't have to light the fi- the house on fire, no. You know, in terms of publicity and national, you know, I don't think she's looking for a national platform at this point. She wants to be a congresswoman, and that's great. Yeah, and she has uh, very simple issues that are very clear. Yep. And you know, she's it's, been it's... endorsed by uh, Emily's list. She's been endorsed by Planned Parenthood and NARAL and uh, Mom's and Demand. Ha- so and she's, hated by she's... the hated by the NRA. So hated by the know. NRA. Yeah, great. <laughs> but she did talk. She did give lip service. I thought that was the funniest line of the night. She did give lip service to what, working on both sides of the aisle. And then she said, I really don't know what I what I would work on with Mary Miller. <laughs> yeah. As somebody said um, mental health and <laughs> someone else shouted, yeah, Mary Miller could really use that because she's <laughs> nuts. Uh, so it was, it was that kind of audience. Mary Miller um, is the Nazi lady who beat Rodney Davis. Yes, in and another district due to redistricting. And is going to win. Is win. going to win. In that yeah, district. she's going to win. It's a there's overloaded red st- red district yeah. because they shoved all of the Republicans together. That's what gerrymandering does. Mm-hmm. By the way, in Kansas, they split up all of the Democrats. Yes, in, the four in districts. Four districts to try yeah. to make there is a Democratic quote unquote on the edge of being a democratic district in Kansas um, represented now by Sharice Davids. And I hope she wins again. She's in a tough race, <clears throat> but there are four districts in Kansas. All four districts voted no on the constitutional amendment. And so now you yep. have, because of increased turnout and increased registration, you may very well have four democratic districts. If this success feeds into turnout in November. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Although you have to be careful about that because again, 20% of Republicans voted no. Right. So, um But we'll take good news where we can find we'll it. We'll take good news. Now, Drift Glass, you got to talk a little bit more about the forward party and I have to announce to everyone <clears throat> some disappointing. Oh. You might you may be very disappointed in Drift Glass. I I'm disappointed I'm... in me. I want to disown me. <laughs> I'm not going to disown you because I feel like it it says more about the other person than it says about you. Yes. <sighs> Drift class was retweeted by Bill Crystal today. Today. So I've arrived. Um, <laughs> my my MSNBC contract is is on the way, I'm sure. <laughs> Not... I, I, I like to think of a conversation between him and Charlie Sykes about, you know, this guy Drift class. I retweeted him like, fuck you. I blocked that guy for a reason, <laughs> asshole. We all blocked him. What? Didn't you get the fucking memo? Um, <laughs> apparently he didn't, uh, because he, uh, is also a believer that a, um, forward party, uh, is not a good idea, which is weird because today, this very day, as we're recording this on the Bulwark podcast, which I haven't listened to yet, the two guests are Andrew Yang and, uh, Chrissy Todd Whitman to talk about from the forward party, the forward oh party God. is the forward party. And so they're getting, you know, gazillion tons of free publicity because everyone loves a new thing and it's. It is somewhat astonishing to me and amusing to me and makes me cry that the only thing the forward party is doing is leaning harder into the both sides do it lie 
Than Matthew Dowd and Andrew Fournier ever did in 2016. Seriously, they just, seriously, that's all, all they and their their own stupid propaganda keeps tripping them up. I get messages from them. Well, you know, this is not a third party. And then I go through like, well, you, what about all the 20 tweets you just sent calling yourself a third party? Oh yeah, you know, we don't condemn both sides. I got that directly from the Sam party, which is a subsidiary. We're, we're not condemning both sides. That, that isn't our thing. And I sent back a shit ton of tweets going. It's the duopoly. It's the duopoly. It's both sides. It's both sides. Just, they don't, they suck at lying this big. <laughs> They're terrible it seems to be a theme. Sucking at lying seems to be a theme today. Well, and their their whole pitch is we don't stand for anything. So don't blame us at all about what you think we might be. The only thing we're in favor of is letting everyone join the party, except for Democrats and Republicans who are both equally terrible and are destroying America. That's their pitch. That's their entire pitch. And so feeding bug spray to infants. Well, we don't want to take a side. Right. Burn pits, burn pits, uh, you pro burn pit, anti burn pit. Who knows? <laughs> you know, you're all welcome. You're all welcome. <laughs> Separating parents from their kids, reuniting parents with their kids. Well, you're all welcome to come in the front door as long as you're not a Democrat or Republican because you guys are terrible. You guys have ruined the country. And it it is it is like Somebody put Fournier and Dowd and all the rest of the both siders assholes in in twenty sixteen in a blender, <laughs> in a blender, and extracted the distilled quintessence of their yeah. bullshit. Yeah, and one of the things that made me kind of uh, laugh this week was one was Matthew Dowd attacking, taking on someone from the Forward Party. Oh lord! And the Forward Party did what you're never supposed to do. Uh, although this guy's the head of a party and a substantial person in Texas and probably someone that Matthew Dowd wants to work with someday. So he didn't block him because mm-hmm. he only blocks nobody bloggers from the Midwest. They, can't, like they can't provide him with a contract. Yeah. Right. Or, but who brings up the past? This guy pulled an article from 2017 from Matthew Dowd, essentially, which was the forward party manifesto. Both sides suck. They're both dinosaurs. They both need to die. Fuck, 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 fuck. And Matthew Dowd, his response was typical Dowd, typical lying Matthew Dowd. Let's not dwell on the past. <laughs> let's not discuss. Let's not discuss what happened before just this minute. Let's only talk about the future and how important things are in this moment. It's important for us all to do blah blah blah. And he also sucks at lying. And and these guys would never get away with all the lies they tell if they didn't have a corporate media that protected them from people like us. So in that vein. I wanted to read you just a paragraph or two from Andrea Petri from the Washington Post on the Forward Party. It's very funny party. sometimes. You very funny. Um, and this is uh, pulled from the Digby blog. You might have heard of Digby. Digby's hullabaloo. Heard of that? It's a liberal blogger from uh, uh, years ago. He's old school. She's, she's old school. She's the OG. And, and the theme of Netroots Nation 10 years ago was what Digby said. I mean, yep. she she was one of the big Godzilla bloggers from the old days. Um Anyway, this is from Andrea Petri. We are not a party of ideas. We are a party of the total absence of ideas. No, rather, our idea is that we will solve problems using good ideas. This is such a good idea, we're amazed that nobody had thought of it before. (laughs) Do we have any good ideas? No, but we're more idea ideas people than idea people, (laughs) if you see. Our big idea is disrupt the system. Other parties have brought things to the table, but we are disrupting that by bringing nothing to the table. (laughs) This is sort of a BYO situation. Like when you bring stones to make soup and everybody else brings everything else. Division is a bad thing. Regardless of what is dividing you, whether it's a question like, do some people perhaps not deserve equal protection under the law? What's bad is the bitterness of the division there, not the fact that some people think that there are two sides to the question. And we are here to fix that with our privilege, with our principal dedication to the principle of being dedicated to a principle. <laughs> also, we have the best graphic design of any party if ever we get around to having a slogan. Well, we probably won't because that would be polarizing. Yes. And so forth. And, <laughs> and you know, they need my- a coffee filter on their head. <laughs> and as, as I mentioned on this podcast last week, 48 hours after Andrew Yang saying, oh, no worry, money's no problem. They're, they had their hand out. Donate $10. Can you donate right. $10? Are you committed to the cause of democracy? Give us money, 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 money. It's a fucking there's grift. so much money among the credulous. Oh, God. Yeah. And also the right wing believes in their heart of hearts in buying their way out of whatever. Of course they do. Crap it works. Into. It, it works. That The reason the right wing exists in this country is they are floating on an ocean of money. 
Well, and I'm just thinking about all the people that bought prepper kits from Alex Jones. Yep. Yep. And we had a conversation on Twitter yesterday about how you and I, if we get a check for $80 in the mail, we run to we the dance. other person. Oh my and God. Dance. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and it's the idea of $800,000 a day. A day. A day. We, we haven't made that in 12 years, Drew. <laughs> no, no. And, we, and we're not and, going and to. We won't. And that's okay. I mean, well, you, you know, I've had long conversations about the freedom that being poor buys yeah. us. You know, yes, it, it does. does. A certain certain yeah. amount of li- liberation comes with it. And and I am grateful every day to our listeners, mm-hmm. to the people yeah. who support us financially, people who support us verbally, people who promote our podcast. But I think among some very well intentioned people, there is often a sort of wild misunderstanding about the scale of capacity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because we are, we are, we sound great. Thanks to our, our, our sound editor, blue gal. Uh, we sound professional. We've been doing this for 12 years. We know our stuff. We can, I can go on the radio in the universe of, of the wider world tomorrow and do this without dropping you, a stitch. You, Drift glass can go on the radio with 30 minutes warning and yeah. be able to talk about Absolutely. the events of the day. So can coherently uh-huh. and with principle. Yeah. I've I've been on radio before locally. I've been on television before locally. I'm not I'm not un I'm not afraid of that. Mm-hmm. But I think there is some misunderstanding about how the difference between various scales of capacity. Right. So, well, and f- if you're an audience member and you're just listening to the Bulwark and the Professional Left and this and this, <clears> and they're all right. a show that sounds good, any of us could be in a professional staffed studio in oh, Manhattan. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and and have 50 people working for us. Sure. But Drift Glass and I have three cats. We do. And that's, our that's it. And a couple, <laughs> and, and couple of donated microphones, microphones. That were donated yeah. to us. And I have my head in my in my closet right now because yeah. it dampens the sound. That's my sound system. And and this is just, you know, real we're not asking for you to be we're not do complaining more, be at more. All. No. not complaining. But we want when when we are asked to do more than we are already doing. Why don't you tackle this entirely different subject over here? It's not that we don't think we should, or that mm-hmm. that would not be a great use of time. It's that um, let me let me run some numbers past you real quick, just very very quickly, mm-hmm. and then direct your questions where you think they're appropriate about who should be covering what. Mm-hmm. So, for example, I did a, a quick research yesterday. Chapo Trap House, um, far left um, bloggers, very successful. They pull in an average of $167,000 per month, There's, which is uh, orders of magnitude more than we do. Yeah. Crooked Media, you know, the, the pod say boys, their annual revenue is $22.6 million. Mm-hmm. And they have a staff of somewhere between 76 and 110 employees. We have three cats. We have three cats. <laughs> do you understand the difference between these things? Now, the bulwark was harder to figure out since it was launched, believe it or not, as a nonprofit arm of the Defending Democracy Together Institute. fucking leaveable And the directors of the Defending Democracy Together Institute are Bill Crystal and Mona Charon. Yeah. Who are also bulwark contributors and podcasters. Right. Uh, it launched with a large donations and grants from wealthy funders, and they've since added several staffers, and they've spun off their own for-profit arm, Bulwark Plus, mm-hmm. which generates around $1.2 million in annual revenue, from subscriptions, and I couldn't figure out how much they make from advertisers, but they make plenty of money. They make mm-hmm. a lot of money. They have staff. And, and everyone's paid. Right. Yeah. The Lincoln Project. During the current funding cycle, the Lincoln Project, which is a media company, which does mm-hmm. messaging, which does what we do right now, uh, raised the, during the current funding cycle of 2001 to 2022, they have raised $24.7 million. During the previous funding cycle, they raised $87.4 million. And as you've already mentioned, Alex Jones generates yeah. up to $800,000 per day, mm-hmm. per day. I know that um, um, uh, Joe Scarborough make, used to make like $117,000 a day. Right. We um, talked about that he knew the day in January when he stopped paying Social Security taxes. Yeah. 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 This, is all, this is all to say that if you're looking for a liberal media, so are we. <laughs> if you're looking for that pot of gold where we don't need to be rich, we don't, we're happy in our home. We're happy with our listeners, we're happy with what we do. But if 
and of course, I don't want to forget Tammy, our, our nerd angel who, who oh my po- posts this stuff yeah. and, and just all the free stuff that she gives us, support and talent and time, et cetera, is invaluable. Yeah. But it is, it is, you write about this stuff all day long. Mm-hmm. I write about this stuff all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, and those gigs together make about as much as a paper boy. Uh, yeah, well, we make five figures. I right. mean, yeah. And, and, and we don't push it into six figures. So, and that's, and that's fine. That's but fine. The yeah. reason that these other people have national reach is mm-hmm. because they have the capacity to hire large staffs mm-hmm. and do lots of things. We are right about now maxed out about what we can do with our time. Well, we're, we're do trying a little to bit get more. on video and we're trying to do right. more science fiction university. We worked on that this week. Yeah. We're working on increasing our commitment to our business. We're working right. on that. Yeah. But it's true. And you said uh, something about we would love to cover these other things. I I don't want to cover some of these other things. Oh, I, I know. I know. And <laughs> the, there are- the thing that came up on Twitter where a well-meaning listener wanted us to take on some of the what might be called the dirtbag left. I don't call them right. that. No. But because on many things I agree with some pe- some of those people, on uh-huh. other issues I don't agree with those people, but I'm not going to burn bridges with people who m- who might be my allies on some things. Right. And um but there is so much within that world, the world that is that that claims to be to the left of me. Let's put it that way. And right. I'm I'm a little old lady Democrat in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. I admit that. Uh, there's so much testosterone in that world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that I just say, you know what? <clears throat> Go off. And it's like Murphy Brown had that great line about these, all these guys fighting among her staff. And she said, you know, whip them out and measure them and then uh-huh. go away. <laughs> uh, do you want me to tell them that you're six foot eight? And don't, don't challenge me, boys. Just don't challenge your class. That's all I'm uh, going to say. <laughs> I, the, the last thing I will say on this subject is in terms of scale, there's a quote from Moneyball that made me laugh when I remembered it, which was the problem we are facing is they're rich teams and they're poor teams. And then there's 50 feet of crap. And then there's us. Yeah. yeah. There is such a, a yawning difference between the, 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 uh, pod save boys and us. Who had and Barack the, Obama on their show. Yeah. Their who, first can, show. Who, who, yeah. who have everybody I mean, on the role is. And that's right. great. But yeah. if you're looking to solve a problem or attack an issue, you should really go to the place that has an office building full of people dedicated yeah. to doing that. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't think that the woman asking us to take on Jimmy Dore and Chapo and all of those guys uh, meant harm to us in any way. No, no. You she know? listens to us. She likes us. Yeah, and we like right. her. And that's great. Yeah. Um, it is simply. We just don't have the energy or the staff or the time to be well, or the desire and, in my and, case. And you and I started our podcast on the theory. And this is this is for all you young podcasters out there like you, Keith Olbermann. Um <laughs> started a podcast hmm. this week yes three days yes. ago four days ago um, he's, number, he started, he's number one or two now like yeah he's way up yeah. he just but it makes sense he's got a built-in yeah, audience we started our podcast at the suggestion of friends on the premise that the best way to do podcasting is to have blogged for several years yes because then that. you develop an area of expertise and there's certain things i'm really good at that i know in great depth and there's certain stuff i don't know mm-hmm. I, or that and, we're passionate about right and then we can I'm write passionate about, about child's health care, mm-hmm. women's rights, being a mom, cats, and knitting. <laughs> right. And if you want um, discussions about the nuances of alternate energy sources, mm-hmm. um, Dr. Volt is the guy to talk to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Dave Roberts is the guy to talk to, not us. I, we're, we're fans of his. We love his stuff. But there is simply no way we can be expert enough in everything that we have passions about to speak intelligently about it. I can talk in great depth about the center and why the center sucks and the history of American politics for the last 40 years and how we got to where we are and receipts and so forth. I, I have mm-hmm. a great deal of expertise in that area. But to learn enough about other subjects, to be able to be expert enough to be- We need to blog I don't for be, six years about them. Right. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to be the MSNBC comment. I don't want to be Charlie Sykes where they call in for everything. This guy's a yeah. former radio host, and they call him to talk about the GNP of Venezuela, right? You know, because he's right. on yeah. staff. I don't want to be that guy. No, um, you know we're the Ely Mistal of centrism, <laughs> and, both sides and do media, it. and media, and media. We really do know Speaking our stuff there. 
Speaking of media criticism. Yeah. And and women and motherhood, etc. Oh god, uh, yeah. Yeah. Business Week this week had an important article about and the tweet they had was failures by the US government to guarantee paid family leave or to grant working women breastfeeding protections at work are the byproduct of a system that allows for the employment and economic advancement of women without actually supporting them. That is a true statement. That is an important statement to talk about why women have had it with the lack of support for motherhood while insisting that it takes multiple salaries to support a household. Uh And, you know, women who have to save up their vacation days to give birth in this country. Uh, These issues are really important, and I am delighted that Business Week is covering them. It's a cover story. However, I went to this article, and I searched online. You can do a find feature to find a word within an article. Mm -hmm. I looked for the word Republican. It is not there. Not one time did they mention that Republicans voted no, that if you that there's a filibuster that stopped things like guaranteed paid family leave, that that stops things like the child tax credit from continuing, that gives who which party wants to stop working women breastfeeding protections at work? It's the system, Blue Gal. It's the system. It's the system. It's the government. It's the government. And it's the government and it's the system. And I said on Twitter, you misspelled Republican and the article does not use that word Republican once. And that ruins this important story because the editors of Business Week are chicken shit. And it's infuriating because we don't get coverage of these issues nearly enough. This week, it was on full display, the schizophrenia of Charlie Sykes. Um, One third of his podcast earlier this week was hysterical fury at Dems for running ads, underscoring the hard right magginess of the nuttier MAGA candidates. Mm -hmm. You know, a few Democrats spent a little money in some campaigns. And by the way, the the one that they're all pointing to is is Peter Meyer, Mm -hmm. uh, who is the heir to the Meyer fortune the Meyer his, grocery store general yes. store fortune oh my yes. god his family is worth six billion dollars <laughs> literally his personal wealth assets are 50 million dollars he's richer if, than jb pritzker if well he's awfully close if yeah. peter meyer didn't spend enough money on the campaign whose fucking fault was that <laughs> I, I just I blows my mind. But, and, but this and, is where the this is where Andrea Mitchell was just having a cow. Oh, this they're all having they're all having cows. They're all having cows. Yeah. How dare they spend money to promote okay. Republican okay. primary candidates? Yes, who are nuts. How, how dare Democrats fight hard? Didn't is yeah. that what you've been asking Democrats to do forever? And now they're doing it. They're they're fighting pretty pretty mean. That yeah. but it's within the they're they're spending money telling the voters. The truth about the candidates. This guy's right. way right. He's very conservative. He believes all this stuff. And it's it's the voters' fault for believing it. Yeah. This is what they want. You told you're telling them this guy's way crazier than that guy, and this guy now gets your votes. Because he's not Republicans believe everything you say and Democrats fact check it. Well, th- <laughs> there's two problems it's with not this. Fair. The second problem was the next third of Mr. Sykes' podcast was complaining that. Republicans have nominated all these crazy people and they're going to get killed. <laughs> like, dude, do the two halves of your brain even talk to each other? Because secondly. No, no, it's second, segments to him. It's right, it's, it's radio just, segments. They're going to get creamed. These guys are all crazy. They're gonna get, yeah, well, that's that's a good thing. Secondly, or thirdly, or whatever number I'm on, riddle me this, Charlie Sykes. If Democratic ads are so mind-bendingly powerful that they can persuade people to vote for someone completely different for the price of 400K. I expect Democrats should be able to pick up 100 seats in the fall mm-hmm. because apparently DCCC ads are magic. Yeah. They can do yeah. amazing, they can, they can change a person, they can reach into their brains and make them make a completely different decision. And if that's true, then I w- I'm looking forward to 
Joe Biden having a supermajority in the House and the Senate because he's flipped 100 seats in the House and 12 seats in the Senate and he can get shit done. Because unless, in fact, DCCC ads and other ads aren't terribly persuasive and people don't get moved wildly from left to right, they only get told, hey, this guy's even crazier than that guy. Do you know that? And the voters in your party, Charlie Sykes, love crazy. Yep. So this is the fault of the voters in your party, the party that you helped build. So own it, asshole. <laughs> anyway. Don't sugarcoat it, Driftglass. Yeah. Let's do a news roundup. <laughs> All right. After you. The Bidening continues, Driftglass. The Biden administration carried out the successful killing of al-Qaeda terrorist leader Ayman al-Zawahiri. Al-Zawahiri was Osama bin Laden's right-hand man. No one else was harmed in the non-explosive drone strike. Donald Trump couldn't decide whether to endorse Eric Greitens or Eric Schmidt in the Missouri Senate race, so he just endorsed Eric the night before the election. Both of them thanked him graciously for his sincere support. Eric Schmidt has since won the Missouri State Senate primary, the Missouri Senate primary. Which is weird because his future, da Trump's future daughter-in-law yeah. uh, was working for Eric Greitens. I know. It's weird. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> They, they, he doesn't they, care. No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't know. A member of the impeachment 10 was defeated. Re Representative Peter Meyer became the second of the 10 Republicans who voted to impeach President Donald Trump. I hate to say those words uh, from being ousted in a primary Tuesday, losing to Trump endorsed conservative challenger John Gibbs. Yeah. Who's nuts? Uh, Tudor Dixon the conservative commentator endorsed by Trump in the final days of the race and backed by a large faction of Michigan Republican establishment, won the state's GOP primary to take on Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Tudor Dixon recently said that she opposed abortion even in the cases of rape or incest. So she's an extremist, in other yeah, words. They're all extremists, Blue Cow. Yeah. All of them. Also in Michigan, Republican gubernatorial candidate Ryan Kelly says he's not conceding, Driftglass. Mm -hmm. uh, he came in fourth. <laughs> fourth. Fourth. Four. Tudor Dixon apparently had 10 times more votes than he did. But I'm not conceding because no. stop the steal. In a morning Facebook post, he is instead spreading conspiracy theories and suggesting a, quote, predetermined outcome for Tudor Dixon. Yeah. Oh, by the way, just as a brief aside, all of these uh, good Republicans who were slashing and, and attacking the bad Republicans who were all undermined by, you know, DCCC money are all doing unity dinners and unity hugs and unity handshakes with the person who beat them in the race because they're mm -hmm. all Republicans and they all followed the same script. Um, Mark Fincham has won the GOP nomination for Arizona Secretary of State. Fincham is a Trump-endorsed election denier. Fincham attended the January 6th Stop the Seal rally and has peddled the QAnon conspiracy theory from wall to wall. That's who you want in charge of your elections, Arizona. Yep. Right? Well, Arizona, man. Arizona. Blake Masters, one of my favorites. Blake Masters has won the Arizona Republican Senate primary. Masters is a venture capitalist who former President Donald Trump backed. He also worked closely with billionaire Peter Thiel, who helped bankroll Masters' campaign. He came out against gay marriage, even though his sponsor, Peter Thiel, is gay. And Blake Masters attended Peter Thiel's wedding. Yep. He also said we should think outside the box and maybe maybe privatize Social Security. Let's think outside the box, Drift Labs. Sure. Boy, do I have a third party for you, Mr. <laughs> Masters. <clears throat> um, we've already talked about Kansas voters and abortion rights. Uh, Atlanta's Music Midtown Festival has been canceled due to the state's radical gun laws. They don't want people packing heat coming to the concert. The musicians do not want that, so they had to cancel the concert, which is a very important concert for Atlanta's downtown because gun nuts in Georgia want everyone armed and carrying. And the state legislature would not have any exemption for the concert. Nope. nope. You get to have open carry in Georgia. That's the law. Mm -hmm. Alex Jones was roasted like a pig on a spit in open court this week. Jones went out of his way to insult the jury and the judge, both in court and on his radio show. And as if that wasn't bad enough, last week, Jones' lawyer handed the prosecutor Jones' entire unredacted phone record and text messages for the past two years. In addition to proving that Jones committed perjury during his deposition, Jones' texts and emails have now been subpoenaed 
by the January 6th committee. I hope they're going to do a whole primetime special on Alex Jones's phone. Matt Gates repeatedly assured Roger Stone that the boss, Donald Trump, would offer him a pardon if he was convicted of lying to Congress about his communications related to WikiLeaks' release of emails from the DNC and Clinton campaign. Quote, the boss still has a very favorable view of you, gets told Stone before start, uh, stating that Trump had, quote, said it directly that Stone would not, quote, do a day in prison. Gates added, I don't think the big guy can let you go down for this. The revelation comes from a hot microphone moment recorded by a Danish filmmaker in 2019. That was this week. I can't believe that was this week. It's, I, it's seems been like a, eons ago, but been yeah. A fire hose this week. Hot, it really Matt has. Matt Gates on a hot mic. Yeah. And the thing was, Roger Stone was bragging about this during the campaign that he was on the phone with uh, the boss. No, that he was on the phone with WikiLeaks. That he was on the phone with oh, Julian yeah. Assange. Yeah. No, it's it's all it's all just hanging by a thread. Susan Collins, who supports same-sex marriage, said the Democrats' unrelated agreement with Joe Manchin on tax and climate change may jeopardize Republican support for the Bipartisan Respect for Marriage Act. I just think the timing could not have been worse. And it came totally out of the blow. Yeah. Collins said. Yeah. Just, you know what? In short order, you have pissed off women, yeah. vets, and now you're gunning for the gays. So... I know you're going to get all the white bigoted assholes because that's your party, but can you really do much um, with just that people? Don't you need a few other people who aren't just stone cold awful and to go out of your way to piss off women and vets in the gay community in one week is some kind of fucking record. Uh, A Texas militia member was sentenced to more than seven years in prison for storming the Capitol on January 6th. This is the longest punishment handed down to any participant in the attack on the Capitol so far. Because he carried a gun and he attacked a cop. I believe that was the one. Yeah. Uh, this week, Republican, this week, Wisconsin Republican Senator Ron Johnson repeated his call to eliminate Social Security and Medicare as uh, standard spending. They want He wants to make it discretionary spending so Congress can debate it. Right. Good for him. I, I you know... The man sticks by his guns. The guns are aimed at his dick, but he sticks by them, and <laughs> and he's pulling that trigger all day, every day. <laughs> and, um, you know, who knows what Wisconsin will do. Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, did test positive for COVID again Saturday after experiencing what's called a uh, Paxlovid rebound. The Biden administration plans to offer reformulated COVID-19 booster shots in September. The updated versions are expected to perform better against Omicron subvariant BA5. Um, I also wanted to talk for a minute about John Stewart. Yeah, please I do. Forgot to do yeah. that. Um, John Stewart uh, fought hard this week uh, for the Pact Act. It the Pact Act. It did pass. Uh, he was infuriated by the pettiness of the Republican Party in the Senate. Um, ter- uh, you know, finding a way to delay and stop uh, helping burn pit victims, veterans who have huh. cancer uh, because they're mad about Joe Manchin. And I said on Twitter that I was glad that uh, it was obvious that John Stewart had graduated from his 2011 yeah. uh, rally to restore sanity where, uh, you know, he believed that we could take turns with people who had an NRA sticker on their car and just sure. be civil to one another sure. and work together and not call everyone a Nazi and not be nasty. Sure. And uh, I wrote an entire post on this at Chris and Liars back in 2011 <laughs> about John Stewart. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, and at that time, and this is what was amazing to me going back to look at this, because I did say he's graduated from this. He now uh-huh. realizes, oh, what are these Republicans doing? Um, he said in 2011 at the rally to restore sanity uh you know there millions of cars must somehow find a way to squeeze one by one into the tunnel you know and drive across a mighty river in a tunnel in new york city curved by the way excuse me carved by the way by people who i'm sure had their differences so we take turns going through the tunnel you go then i'll go you go then i'll go you go then i'll go oh my god is that an nra sticker on your car is that an obama sticker on your car well that's okay you go then i'll go 
And sure, at some point there will be a selfish jerk who zips up the shoulder and cuts in at the last minute, but that individual is rare and he is scorned and not hired as an analyst. That's what John Stewart said in 2011. Yeah. And I wrote the next day, you know, John Stewart, Andrew Breitbart has been hired as an election night analyst by ABC News. Yep. Remember? So, remember? <laughs> remember that Michelle Bachman is a member of Congress at that time? She was a member mm -hmm. of Congress. And so I, I decided to use the tunnel analogy. Uh, here we are trying to work together to get through the tunnel and resolve the problems of America. The right jumps in front of our car and says, we don't own that car. And where's the papers showing we can drive through the tunnel? We show them the papers over and over and over the car's birth certificate. But the right screams that that's not the actual paper we need to drive through the tunnel. And it's their tunnel. They want their tunnel back. We get just enough help to get one or two cars through the tunnel. The health care and financial reform cars crawl out of the tunnel. By the time they're through that tunnel, they're missing tires and several cylinders, but somehow they're through. As soon as some on the right see those two cars emerge from the tunnel, they scream that those cars were shoved down their throats and they vow to push and repeal the cars backwards through the tunnel so it looks like it never happened. It's our tunnel. We want our tunnel back. The very people who told us to sit down and shut up because they had a mandate in 2004 insist that a Kenyan usurper has stolen the White House. And if a Democrat points out that Obama, a U.S. citizen, won with a 10 million vote majority and 365 electoral votes, la, 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 socialism. We want our tunnel back. One could argue that the birthers are a small, overly vocal fringe, but it's not just the birthers. The leadership of the Republican Party now vows in 2011 that any one of them can block the entire tunnel because of Senate rules. Gridlock is better than sharing the tunnel. And Michelle Bachman, yep, she's a member of Congress. She has promised in this election cycle of 2012, midterm elections, oh, actually national election cycle, she says, forget the tunnel. She's taking everyone back to the DMV for two solid years of investigation. Mm -hmm. And now we have Marjorie Taylor Greene doing exactly the same thing. Revenge investigations are coming. Yep. For January 6th investigation, they're planning revenge investigation for the Democrat Party. That's what she said. And of course, as the Republicans were blocking the tunnel and burning cars in the tunnel and shoving people back in the tunnel and screaming that it's our tunnel, Chuck Todd was asking the important question, which was, why won't Barack Obama manage the tunnel better? Yeah. What's wrong with Barack Obama that he won't lead us all? Why won't he lead? Yes. And, and it is beyond maddening to watch the same assholes who told the same lies about the same crazy party yeah, doing it all over again. Yeah. And it is at some point, a terrible rerun movie that never ends because the assholes who control the cameras and the microphones don't want it to end. Right. And yet every right. now and then a little bit of light comes through and Kansas votes to keep the right to abortion in their constitution. Mm -hmm. Every now and then there's a little bit of a little burst of hope and I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it because the alternative is, is so unpleasant that I don't want to consider it. Um, I'm going to well, fight and like you've hell. Used, you've used the analogy multiple times about, uh, you know, they just keep throwing cinder blocks into traffic. That's all they do. That's all yeah. they do. And and there is this, it can't at this point be ignorance. It has to be complicity of yeah. on the part of the media to keep normalizing it. Because again, the alternative is to start reporting that one of the major American parties is a fascist cult and we're all in danger of it. And we all we all have to band together to to destroy it. Advertisers and, hate that, and that's the purpose of the mainstream media. Yeah, is to sell and, advertising. So, and speaking of crazy, um, <laughs> we've got our own crazy drift class. There's one more story, a local story. Uh, I wrote a post this week called "Darren Bailey Has a Darren Bailey Problem." <laughs> uh, Darren Bailey, as you may or may not know from listening to this podcast, is a far right crackpot Republican who is currently serving in the Illinois Senate from the 55th district. He's also the Illinois Republican Party's nominee for governor. He's the guy they wanted, and he's the guy they got. And in Darren and the D Bailey, the DCCC did ads for him. They, they did. did. They did. 
No, I think it was it, it was the Governor's Association, I think. Okay, the Re- Democratic Governor's yeah. Association. Saying, this yeah. guy's crazy and he's very conservative and you should be worried about him. And the voters said, really? Love that. Let's have more of that. So now we have Darren Bailey, um, who Illinois Republicans found in him a candidate who most accurately and loudly reflects their value. And now they're fucking choking on it. Mm-hmm. This is from NBC News Chicago. Darren Bailey faces intense backlash after footage surfaces of him comparing abortion to the Holocaust. <laughs> because everything's the Holocaust, Lou Gal. <laughs> Bailey, who won the party's nomination to take on incumbent Governor J.B. Pritzker in November, made the comments when he was running for the Illinois House in 2017. This was not in 1912. The attempted extermination of the Jews in World War II doesn't even <laughs> compare on a shadow of the I life. I'm already is, listening to this. I'm sorry. I just uh. doesn't compare on a shadow of the life that has been lost with abortion. He said during the interview, the footage was republished by Forward, a national Jewish net newspaper, earlier this week. Well, of course, and and how offensive to everybody. It it's, he, it it goes. It's Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, all over it, again. You know? It is. It is. And and <laughs> Bailey's Bailey's coverage and the outrage that Democrats would spend a little money to promote this guy or at least tell the truth about him mm-hmm. uh, is not being covered by the national media no. because Darren Bailey is going to get stomped by J.B. Pritzker in the yes, fall. So it's not really a story. That the, the wagering on the spread now, sixty points, seventy points, who knows? Um, but my larger point is this. The real experts on what's going on inside the GOP, what they actually look like under the mask, have always been those of us who live out here among them in flyover country. Mm -hmm. You and I don't have to run polls or focus groups to figure out what these mopes are really thinking. All we ever have to do is keep our ears open when we're in the grocery store or at a bar or in the church parlor or a city council meeting because they're not fucking shy about it. Right. Well, and and I've heard from people in Kansas this week who knew that this race was winnable if they organized. Yep. And because they've had to organize for many years now. Sam, you said last night, Sam Brownback delivered for Republicans in yeah. Kansas. They got their wish list and he destroyed they, the state in doing and it. And he destroyed the state economy. He destroyed public education and they, the whiplash against people associated with Brownback was swift and heavy. Mm -hmm. And now they have a Democratic congresswoman. They have a Democratic governor, woman Mm -hmm. governor. And it's because women don't like their children's schools fucked with. No. Ron DeSantis. Yep. And uh, it's time, uh, once again, for us to surprise everybody by voting our rage. Yep. And uh, each week we post to our Facebook page and website and Internet Kitties and in by you, the listeners, this week's Internet Kitty is Morgan Le Fay. Morgan has been with her humans for 13 years. She is a sweet kitty and also tough as nails. And in this picture, she is dangling from her high perch. She is very much a cousin to Olive, the parkour kitty at our house. The parkour, the parkour kitty. You know kitty, how yeah. Olive likes to just climb up on something and then droop off the edge of it? Oh, like, yeah. He has no bones. Well, that's in this picture. Morgan Le Fay is doing the same thing. And of course, Morgan Le Fay eats freshly poured cat food. Our fake sponsor, whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cats will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured. Freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Morgan Le Fay at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Hashtag fire to joy and congratulations to the state of Pennsylvania whose Supreme Court has upheld vote by mail. Woohoo! Bravo, bravo. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity, this is our actual job. 
Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information is there. All of it at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this episode, send us five bucks. That's a great way to let us know you liked a specific episode. Oh, and if you visit Hal Sparks' YouTube page, tell him we sent you. Yeah, leave a comment there that we sent you over there. He's a great guy. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, for the record, the Internet Kitties' cell phones are nothing but thousands of cat pics with captions about how awesome cats are. And let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2022, DGBG Productions Incorporated.